I'm Steve Heinsohn, pastor at Christ Our Redeemer Lutheran Church, a congregation of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and with Little Lambs, our preschool, pre-K, and kindergarten located in Sandpoint, Idaho. We have a very clear mission statement as God's people to engage people, connect generations, and build relationships in Christ. My prayer is that as we gather today in worship, you would be blessed as we see how the Lord is walking with us in this journey of life and faith, and as we all grow together as God's people. The Lord be with you as we begin this journey together in worship. God's people. It's Pentecost Sunday as we remember and give thanks for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As we begin, it's important that we remember why God has put us here. This is our mission statement, so let's read it together. Engage people, connect generations, build relationships in Christ. That's what we're called to in this time and place, to engage people, not wait for them to come to us. We go to them. To we connect generations. Uh, last Sunday was confirmation. You saw multiple generations. And we see it again this morning as we work together. It's about building relationships in Christ. With Christ himself and with each other. Have a number of things as we get started. More than a few things actually. Just a reminder. The orange sheets in front of you. The record of fellowship. If you fill one out per family. And place that in the plate as you leave this morning. That would be great. That helps us keep on top of things. Two weeks from this Sunday is our twice annual voters meeting. It's Sunday, June 6th, following worship, we have a total of one agenda item. One. The budget. So, for the fiscal year, June, July 1st through June 30th. So, one item budget meeting, or one item voters assembly, that's in two weeks following worship service probably saw the baby bottles in back as you came in. This is the annual fundraiser for the Life Crisis Pregnancy Center. You're welcome to take one of those baby bottles, be sure to sign down, <coughs> fill up a change, and bring it back prior to Father's Day. So that's to help out with our local Life Choices Pregnancy Center. Also, Little Lamb's Bibles, I think this one's in the back of your service folder, yes. But each year at the end of the school year we present age-appropriate Bibles with stories and such to our Little Lambs graduates, all three classes. They're roughly $10 each. If you'd like to help in purchasing those Bibles for our three, four, five, and six-year-olds this year, you're welcome to write a check for check and just write Bible in the memo line, and that way each of our students at the end of the school year can receive a Bible. That's all I have for now, so I'd invite you to stand as we begin this morning with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit is often misunderstood. We, we don't always know exactly what to do with this part of the Trinity. But Lord, the Spirit brings life, breath. It brings us to faith. It keeps us in faith. We thank you for the gift of the Spirit and the many ways in which he is at work within our lives each day. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Opening song this morning, you'll find either on up here in front or in your service folder, Come Thou Almighty King.
remain standing as we take our brokenness, our weakness, and our sin. We lay it at the foot of the cross and receive from there that forgiveness, that life, the Spirit's power working within us that we all so much need. We continue with the invocation. You'll find it either in your service folder or all here in front. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are the treasured people of the Lord, a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. We praise you, O Christ, as our good shepherd, for you willingly offered up your life to save us. We realize it is because of our wanderings that it became necessary for you to sacrifice all on our behalf. Therefore, we come before you, confessing our sin and awaiting your word of forgiveness and hope as we have a moment of silence to consider our brokenness and sin, but a Savior who has come to bring life and a Spirit who is at work to keep us in faith. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of the sin I know, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in your peace. Renew me, that the desire of my heart may be to keep your commands, and the words and passions of my life may be holy through Jesus Christ. Upon this your confession, I announce the grace of God to all of you. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, through your Spirit's work within us, keep us faithful. Keep us filled with your Spirit's power and action as we take advantage of those opportunities that you give us to reach out to people and connect them to Jesus. We thank you for that Spirit's work within us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated as we turn our attention to the reading of God's Word. I'd invite you to follow along with the readings as they are printed in your service folder. You ready for the names in the second one, Howard? Have fun with it. <laughs> First lesson is <clears throat> taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and it brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Saw the Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the law of sovereign Lord says to these bones I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons of flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy with the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to him, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. 
I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle, I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle I sent is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, are all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, resident, <coughs> residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Jew Judea, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask them, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this was what's spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading for this Pentecost Sunday is from John chapters 15 and 16. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief, because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. For unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our true Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it in your service folder or also here in front. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare for the children's message by singing this little gospel light of mine. Festival in Jerusalem when this happened, 
People from all over the world were there. It happened to be called Pentecost. And they all spoke different languages. And the disciples then went out and they started speaking in all these different languages they hadn't studied in school. All these different languages. And they were talking about Jesus in a language that everyone could understand. It was pretty amazing. It might have been a little unusual if you'd been there for it, but it was a really neat day. The Holy Spirit came into them just as He comes into you and me. Now, does that mean we can speak Portuguese? Not really. But it does mean that there are some other gifts that God gives us because of the Holy Spirit. Here's the first one. What's that word? Faith. Faith. Holy Spirit works faith in us. And faith's kind of important to have. Faith. Yeah, I, I would not do that. I, I, I do not like heights. I have never liked heights. Even when I'm hiking in the mountains, I get really nervous when the path gets narrow and it's a thousand foot drop off. No, she doesn't. She's just hanging. She's going in faith that she'll make it across with no trouble. The Holy Spirit works faith in our hearts so we would believe in Jesus. That's a really important gift. There's another gift. There's actually three I'm going to focus on today. What's this? Power. Power. Does that mean you're super duper strong? Not really. It does mean that you have the power, you have the desire to tell others about Jesus. Because is it easy to always tell people about Jesus? It's not always easy, is it? The Holy Spirit gives you power and strength and courage and confidence as you go out. Almost gave away the next one. The last one is new life. You get a new start as the Holy Spirit works in you. And you live as a child of God. Are those some pretty awesome gifts? Yes, they are. Now, again, we don't have a birthday cake to celebrate today, but we celebrate every day. The Holy Spirit works within each of us. So let's go to our Lord in prayer. We would all repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Bless our lives each day. Bless our lives each day as we live as your children, as we live as your children. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, your children's church leaders are in the back. The rest of us, we will continue on this Pentecost Sunday with our next song, Holy Spirit, Ever Dwelling.
misunderstood person in the Trinity. Open our eyes and hearts today to see what your spirit has been up to and what he's still up to in our lives as your children today. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers, sisters in Christ, a pastor was at a large conference in a major city and was staying in a hotel right in the heart of downtown. One morning, he woke up and heard quite a commotion out on the street below him. Now that was kind of unusual because he was on the 12th floor of this hotel. He looked, took a look out almost straight down and saw that out on the street below him, a small crowd had formed. There was a guy on a street corner with a bullhorn. And he was not happy. He was talking about the coming of the age of judgment, this corrupt generation, and that God is really angry. There were more than a few references to hell itself. The pastor thought, thank God the exit to this hotel is on the other side of the street. But his second thought was that this guy's really passionate, and he's pretty bold to be out there. Didn't agree one bit with his style, but he was having the opposite effect of what probably he was hoping to do. But his third thought was, I could never do this. He could not imagine going out on a street corner with a bullhorn trying to talk about God and about spiritual things. But let's be honest, many people today do struggle with sharing their faith or spiritual matters to friends and family, let alone to a bunch of strangers out on a street corner somewhere. It seems impossible. But think about it. Is it really any different this morning than it was 2,000 years ago in the city of Jerusalem on that Pentecost day? I wonder, what was going through the disciples' heads back on that first Pentecost? Just before Jesus had ascended into heaven, ten days before this, he told them, um, by the way, boys, you will be my witnesses, starting in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. What went through their minds as they huddled together in that upper room that day. You know, we're not public speakers. We don't know that much. It seemed like an impossible task to them that they would go out and witness in the streets of Jerusalem, and especially in the streets of Jerusalem, remembering what had happened there 50 days before that. But then, blowing in the wind, the tongues of flame, and the Holy Spirit arrives. The next thing you know, they're out on the street corners proclaiming that Jesus is the resurrected Lord and Savior. That event was, as we understand it, the beginning of the Christian church on the festival of Pentecost. So, as, as I mentioned in the children's message, in a lot of ways, today is like a birthday for us. That is a foundational truth an event for us. And as we look at Pentecost this morning, there are at least three things I think we can pull from it. First one, God's power accomplishes the humanly impossible. Second, God's word penetrates the heart. And third, as a result, God's people can make an impact. Let's start with God's power accomplishing the impossible. If you looked at everything that happened on that day, it sure looks impossible humanly. But God wanted it to happen. Pentecost is 50 days after the Passover. And in, back in Jesus' day, it was actually a celebration of the first fruits of the harvest. Pentecost was one of three festivals that if it were possible for you as a Jew in those days, that you actually made the trip to Jerusalem to celebrate. Another one was the Passover. So, 
those who came to Jerusalem for the Passover often would just stay in town, stick around for the 50 days, and then celebrate Pentecost. Think about that a moment. That means the same crowd that was there when Jesus was crucified likely was still in town. At least some of the people who were yelling out to Pontius Pilate to crucify him, who maybe behind the scenes applauded when Jesus breathed his last, are still in Jerusalem. And certainly, all of the religious leaders who cranked up the heat on the Roman authorities to get rid of Jesus are still in town. And they're a bit on edge. They thought they had taken care of this problem when they put him to death. But now all these rumors are going around. Jesus came back to life. So it's a pretty hostile crowd. The apostles are saying, we need to lay low a bit. Let's let everything settle down, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. But then, ten days after the ascension, the wind blows loudly, tongues of fire land on heads. Everyone is hearing the apostles speak in their own native tongue. And as I shared one other year, not just their tongue, but their dialect. So much for flying under the radar, now they're in the limelight. The impossible is accomplished. You would think, knowing who would have been there, that when they started talking about Jesus, the crowd would have accused them of false teaching, of heresy, and literally ran them out of town. It's not what happened. The people listened. It's the power of God. God's power accomplishes the impossible. And by the way, that's not limited to the first Pentecost. Nothing has changed. The same spirit that descended on the disciples is the same spirit that's alive and active in you. The same spirit that came into their hearts is the same spirit that entered your heart when you came to faith and were baptized. Oh, and the spirit, not the least bit timid. Paul says to Timothy, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, of love, and of self-control. That's the spirit that is alive within you. And God still accomplishes the impossible. Perhaps you are facing something that looks mighty impossible in your own life. You can't see yourself advancing beyond it. You really don't want to wake up the next day and still have to face that thing. You're looking for some direction from God. It all seems impossible. But the same spirit of Pentecost is alive and active in you. God's power does the impossible and the unexpected. Perhaps you're uncertain of someone's relationship with the Lord. How can I bring that up in a conversation, especially today? I don't know what to say. I'm no good at this. But it's not about you. It's the power of God at work in you. Consider that group of apostles and disciples for a moment. Talk about a ragtag group. Fishermen, a tax collector. James and John were called the sons of thunder. They had a reputation for pretty wild living. They were not educated men, not spiritually trained people, or public speakers. But it wasn't about what the apostles could or could not do. It's not about what you or I can or cannot do. It's about God's power doing the humanly impossible. Second point, God penetrate, God's word penetrates the hearts. Again, let's go back to this ragtag group. People hear them speak in their own native language and dialect that day. I'm guessing it was kind of chaotic, to put it mildly. And then Peter stands up. Hold on, everybody. And he delivers the first recorded Christian sermon. He goes back to the prophet Joel from the Old Testament. 
It's becoming reality right now, folks. God's Spirit has just descended upon us. Knowing that he is speaking with a Jewish audience that really knows their Old Testament, he goes back to those ancient prophecies in Joel, and he connects the dots for them, showing that Jesus is the promised one. He testifies that God raised Jesus from the dead and comes to a bold conclusion. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. That is dropping a bombshell. Remember, he's addressing Jews who take their faith seriously. They all are looking for the promised Savior. For generations, they had different ideas. What would this Messiah, this Savior, look like? Peter told them basically, the Messiah you were looking for, he was here. You didn't listen to him. In fact, you crucified him. Now, given the crowd that he's speaking with, this was a suicidal statement. I was trying to come up with some modern-day analogy of what this might look like. Here's the best I could come up with. Let's say I walked into a biker bar <laughs> in a nice, beautiful set of man rompers. And I walked in and said, motorcycles are for weenies. <laughs> How do you think that would go? You see, there's some things you just don't do or say or wear. I can't imagine Peter saying something like this to the crowd. You would expect the crowd to be in a total uproar, grab stones, start flinging them, and kill them for this ridiculous, false teaching they're sharing. But listen what happens in verse 37 of Acts 2. When they, the people, heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the disciples, Brothers, what shall we do? That's a miracle right there. God's word penetrated their hearts and convicted them that Peter's words were true. He literally broke them. In the next verse, Peter gave an answer. Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That same spirit you just saw working. The gospel came in and it literally put them back together. It shows them the forgiveness they've been given in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit called them to faith. That is the power of God's word. And nothing has changed. It's the same spirit, the same word, the same power of God today. It still penetrates hearts. God's word has convicted and broken you and me. It's shown us our sin, the things you regret and wish you could take back, the words you wish you had never spoken. God breaks you so that he can put you back together with the gospel. And I pray in those times when God does convict your heart, you would say to yourself, I'm a child of God. I'm baptized. In the water of baptism, you receive the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit daily reminds you that Jesus lived, died, and rose for you. God did not come to condemn this world. He came to save it. And God used Peter's voice, his personality, and his knowledge of the Old Testament. But Peter's not the one who convicted the people at all. God's word convicted the people. It's a living and active word that's sharper than any double-edged sword. And God still uses you and me today. He uses your personality, your relationships, your gifts and talents. Now, it's not you. It's God at work. God's word penetrates hearts. And having God's power and spirit means, my final point, that we make an impact in the world. It's his word and his power, but he works through 
us. Think of the impact the disciples had that day. After Peter spoke, you continue in Acts 2, 3,000 people came to faith and wanted to be baptized that day. Do you think they ever would have imagined that happening? Oh, it doesn't end there. At the end of Acts 2, it says, And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You see that phrase being repeated over and over again in the book of Acts because the church literally exploded. Christianity spread around the world, but it all started on that Pentecost day with that simple message. The impact of that is felt today. And that's why you're here. You and I have been called to faith. We gather here to worship Him. God's people still make an impact. Nothing has changed. It's the same word, the same spirit, the same power. God still uses us today. And just as the disciples had to leave that upper room and get out into the streets, we get out of our chairs in this place and out of our homes, and we go out into the world God's put us in. We look for opportunities to share Jesus wherever he puts us. For example, this time of year, roughly 75, 80 people, it varies, gather in this place for worship on Sunday. Let's say about half, 40 of you decide sometime in this next month, you're going to look for an opportunity to share Jesus, a spiritual conversation, a word of encouragement, pray with someone, or just offer an invitation maybe to take the opportunity to come here for a week. Let's say half of those people don't respond or want anything to do with it. That still means that in the next month, 20 people could be impacted by us. This is actually the way churches grow. Doors open. God's spirit and God's power rushes in. God's people still make an impact. By the way, I'm not asking you to grab a bullhorn and go out on a street corner. <laughs> I just don't, in fact, I prefer you didn't do that because it's really not effective. But nothing has changed from that first Pentecost when the Holy Spirit showed up. Same Spirit, same power. God's power still accomplishes the impossible. God's Word still penetrates hearts. And God's people still make an impact in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen. We continue with our next song, Spirit of the Living God.
invite you to stand as we go to our Lord in prayer. To take those things in our hearts and our minds to our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to guide and direct our lives. Mold us each day to conform to the image that you would have us be, a child of God. And help us to boldly and willingly share the love of Jesus and the opportunities you place before us each day. And Lord, there are a number of things in our hearts we wish to share with you this day. Lord, we pray for those who are sick or hospitalized, who are dealing with cancer, depression, or substance abuse issues, that you would lift them up and be light and hope for them. Be with the homeless who are looking for a safe place to live, and we give you thanks for that amazing gift of caregivers who are making a difference in the lives of those who are struggling. In the midst of this pandemic, Lord, continue to provide the healing that we have seen. Be with those who are sick or are still dealing with after effects of this. For those who have been furloughed or lost jobs, that they would be provided the healing and hope that is needed. Lord, give us serving hearts, hearts that even during incredibly hectic times are open through your spirit to share Jesus with our community. And Lord, we bring before you Christ our Redeemer, our little lambs, preschool, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, our adult Bible class, children's church, the intentional outreach we're doing for this community and look forward to doing this summer that these would all be opportunities to connect people to Jesus. All these prayers we bring before you, in Jesus' name, amen. As Jesus gathered with his disciples on that first Monday, Thursday, he was sharing the Passover meal with them, as I mentioned in the message, one of those three feasts that the Jews of old were expected to be in Jerusalem for. But as he gave it, he knew what was coming, his death, his resurrection and the gift of the Spirit that came to them and comes to us. So as we receive this gift, we remember and give thanks that God has come to us in his body and blood to lift us up each day. And as we prepare to receive it, we join together in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated as we come to the front to receive our Lord's Supper, as we've been doing for quite some time. You'll be ushered up this side first. Steve will give you the bread. Pastor Steve will give you the wine, and we'll have the basket container on the end where you may place your cups. Bob will be clicking the song during the message. It's a beautiful Savior, which is a great fit for both communion and for Pentecost. Let's receive this gift of our Lord's Supper. <laughs>
invite you to stand as we go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, for this rich, amazing gift of love, we give you our thanks. Lord, through your Spirit, walk with us each day in this journey of life and faith that we are on, that you would lift us up and strengthen us as we reflect that love to the lives of others. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. We receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give each of you his peace. Amen. We remain standing for our closing song, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
And by the way, that is still happening in Africa and some other places around the world. It is still happening. Um, but the Lord works in his own time and way through us as we share the faith with others that he puts into our lives. So as we do that, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. And speak to God. My prayer is that this time of worship has helped draw you closer to the Lord who loves you unconditionally and draws you closer to him through his word. If you have any questions or would like to share a prayer request or other things with us, I'd invite you to contact us here at Christ Our Redeemer, either by phone at area code 208-263-7516, or feel free to contact me via email, pastorsteve at corsandpoint.org. I'd also like you to invite you to worship with us in person we are located at 1900 Pine Street in Sandpoint, Idaho. We're across the street from the YMCA and next to Travers Park. God's blessings to you and your family as we live as children of God and celebrate his work in our lives every day.